So I'm going to turn the program over to Andre Andreas to um, introduce our speaker. Hello, and everybody. Then... Can you hear me? Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Am I on the phone? Yes. OK. Well, uh, I'm, I'm really pleased to introduce Tim Hayden today as our speaker. Um, I've known Tim for close to 20 years. Um, we work together in a lot of different ways. We started out um, as uh, program partners sitting across the table from each other trying to do river restoration work and salmon restoration work. And then um, after a while, he just hired me and brought me over to his side of the table. Um, so he's, uh, he's a great manager, good friend. Um, he's got, uh, and they're doing amazing, innovative work uh, on the Yurok tribe. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to hearing all about it. So, Tim. Well, uh, wow, thank you, uh, Andreas. That was, uh, that was really humbling, thank you. Um, uh, and thank you all for, for uh, inviting me to speak and uh, I'm very happy to, to share our work uh, up on the, the Klamath and Trinity Rivers. Um, I've been, I don't know if you've noticed, I've been squinting at the screen here all morning and I just realized I'm wearing my daughter's glasses. So thank you, uh, save me. So. <laughs> all right, now I can see. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, thank you. Um, uh, I guess I have a couple things here. I have a, a presentation, but maybe I'll start off with an introduction first and, and uh, a little bit of background uh, on the Yurok tribe and, and the work that we've done, uh, well, for the last couple decades on, well, forever, but in the last couple decades, we've really done a lot in terms of uh, our lands acquisitions and, uh, and, and land management efforts. But uh, first, let me uh, give you a little bit of background about myself. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, I'm the uh, Deputy Executive Director for Natural Resources for the Yurok Tribe. Um, I've worked for the Yurok Tribe for about 24 years now, and uh, I was originally hired uh, as a tribal fisheries technician back in the 90s, and uh, I uh, went to school at Humboldt State, and I graduated from the fisheries program there, and uh, that was a really great experience um, and got very lucky. Uh, I, I started work for the tribe uh, not long after the uh, Yurok tribal uh, constitution was signed. So the Yurok tribe has been around for, for well, forever, um, but had really, uh, it's a long story, but after the, there was a Hoopa Yurok Settlement Act, and in 1993, the Yurok tribe uh, became formally organized as, as its own tribe. And... Uh, it signed its constitution. So I, I started work in 1996 and I've been there uh, ever since. And it's a really great job. Um, I'm a fisheries biologist by, by training, uh, work with Andreas, as he mentioned, uh, on a lot of in-stream flow management, uh, and fisheries habitat, and fish population monitoring work up on the Trinity River. We did that together for many years. Um, and then, uh, so in 19, or excuse me, um, in 2015, excuse me, I, uh, I was, I was talked into taking this role as our, uh, natural resources division lead. And so, uh, at that time it was time for a change and a new challenge. So I took this position and, uh, so I oversee the Yurok tribes, uh, natural resources division. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background on the tribe. Just, I'm sure you, you may know a little bit about it, but, uh, uh, the Yurok tribe is the largest tribe in California. We have uh, over 6,000, I think about 6,300 tribal members right now. So we're the largest tribe in terms of population and membership uh, in California. And uh, our land base is, is growing very fast. And, and that's what I wanted to, to talk about today. Um, the tribe itself, uh, of course, we're, the reservation is located on the, on the lower Klamath River, uh, the lower 42 miles extends from uh, Wichpec at the mouth of the uh, Trinity River to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, the reservation is about a mile on each side of the river. And uh, if, uh, well, 
I'll say that the uh, a lot of the tribal members, you know, live on and off reservation, but the majority of the uh, tribal membership live either in Klamath or Requa or up what we call upriver uh, areas up near Wichpec and in Pequon. Um, so maybe with that, I can just I can uh, I have a presentation. Can I uh, can I get the screen and I can drive here? Let's see here. Do I need to hand, does somebody need to hand that over to me? Or how do I do this? Can I share my screen? You should be able to just share it. Go ahead and give it a go. Oh, okay, I see. Sorry. I'm used to a uh, go-to meeting. <laughs> Let me see here. So bear with me. Yep, no worries. Okay. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna start off with a map. And I also um, I sent this map at it late, a little bit later. Um, this map here, let me zoom out a little. Oh, too much. No, I uh, I forwarded the map to you all see everyone that? in your email. I wanted to, okay, and it's a little colorful here, but I wanted to give you a little bit of lay of the land, so to speak. Um, as I mentioned, the Yurok Reservation extends about, about 42 miles from the mouth of the Trinity River to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, our reservation uh, extends about a mile on each side of the river. And you can see here, um, these are the reservation boundaries. Uh, we've the, within the reservation, there's around 50,000 acres, 54,000 acres of, of land. And unfortunately, uh, over the years, due to um, um, well, a lot of things. Uh, the tribe has lost ownership of a lot of those lands. Uh, a, a majority of the lands had been purchased uh, by a Green Diamond Resources Company. Uh, and so one of the goals of the tribe, and it's really as part of our constitution, is to repatriate those lands. And so, um, you know, we've been working very hard to, to restore our tribal land base within the reservation, but also throughout our ancestral territory. So this map here, it shows this, this maroon line kind of outlines the, uh, uh, the extent of the ancestral territory. Um, the Yurok Reservation, except for the, the private lands here to the south, uh, you know, we've got um, a lot of federal lands surrounding the Yurok Tribes the Reservation. We have uh, Six Rivers National Forest um, to the east, We've got Redwood National and State Park lands to the south and to the north. Um, and then of course we have the Hoopa Reservation uh, also to the, to the south on the Lower Trinity River. And so, as I mentioned, one of the, <coughs> the main goals of the tribe is to restore our land base, um, both within and, and, and uh, within the reservation, but also throughout the ancestral territory. Um, so we've been working very hard starting in around 2000. This is actually before my time. I was still working on the Trinity River, but uh, we started to negotiate the Green Dad Resources Company to uh, their commercial timberlands. And so luckily, uh, due to some market forces, uh, some impending endangered species issues, they decided, yeah, sure, let's let's start negotiating. And so we started down a road of, of negotiating in, in a, some pretty large land acquisitions. So in 2011, we purchased what we call our Cook Kapala properties. And um, so you can see these areas here that are kind of brownish colored here on the upper end of the reservation. We purchased about 9,000 acres of land. And what was really interesting uh, about that acquisition, it was our first large scale acquisition. Um, and what, the way we've uh, financed those properties, we've uh, created the, the state's first, uh, first, uh, excuse me, uh, forest carbon project. It's under the uh, California cap and trade program. Uh, in 2011, we started uh, well, that we started negotiating with the California getting started. Uh, the state had not really anticipated involvement from tribes, so we started working with them 
and uh, and through some negotiations, tribes were allowed to participate. We decided to develop the, actually the state's very first uh, forest carbon project. So that project was uh, registered in 2011, and, uh, and so that was our first project. And uh, it's really been a, a, a really great thing for the tribe. It's really allowed us to, um, well, to fund the acquisitions, but also to, um, to support our land management needs and, and, it, and definitely put tribal members to work. Um, in 2013, we continue to work with Reed Diamond and others. Uh, we entered into a partnership with a group called the Western Rivers Conservancy. Um, they're a nonprofit group based out of uh, San Francisco and Portland. Uh, they essentially um, work with landowners and per basically purchase uh, watersheds to set up um, conservation easements and other, um, you know, uh, preserves uh, to protect uh, wild and scenic rivers and, and uh, really unique ecosystems. And so we started working with Western Rivers and we wanted to um, really look at some creative financing to continue purchasing, you know, some of these lands within the reservation, but also adjacent to it. So in 2013, we closed on what we're calling our phase one property. And you can see here, uh, it's around a 20, 24,000 acres of lands that we purchased in Upper Pequon and Upper uh, Capel Creeks. I don't know if you can see my icon here. Uh, and that was really a, a really an, another innovative um, approach to uh, acquiring our lands. We um, again decided to um, we well, it's a long story, and I won't go into too much detail about it. But we've essentially uh, worked with the California Water Resources Board uh, to uh, acquire a, uh, a loan from their state revolving fund. And what's really unique about it, and, and what we've agreed to do, is to develop a, um, a land management strategy to improve water quality uh, and air quality. And so we've, by, by doing that, we've uh, continued to work with the Air Resources Board and set up uh, our second uh, forest carbon project. Um, so that, that project's, again, about 24,000 acres uh, and uh, we continue to to, to uh, use those funds to to uh, pay off the loans, but also to uh, fund some of our road decommissioning work um, and other restoration activities up there. Um, so continuing along that that trajectory, trajectory, we working with Western Rivers Conservancy, um, and in 2015 we um, purchased really what we felt was, um, uh, you know, a really culturally important area. We purchased Lower Blue Creek. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the Lower Blue Creek watershed uh, here in, in the Lower Klamath is kind of this uh, grayish color. So that was our what we're calling our Phase Two acquisition, and that was around twenty-five thousand acres. So over the years here, we purchased fifty thousand acres uh, fully grown um, very quickly. Um, so one of the things that we've done is develop a, a, a two-pronged land management strategy. And I'm going to switch over to my presentation. Let me see here. We'll go over to here. Can you see? So, um, you know, I wanted to, to really talk a little bit about, you know, the tribe's culture. Um, you know, the Yurok tribe, as I mentioned, we've been in the in the area forever. Uh, the Yurok tribe, you know, is really uh, a river people. 
uh, you know, the, the Lower Klamath and Trinity Rivers are really incredibly important to the Yurok tribe. Uh, the Yurok tribe is a, a, you know, a fishing people, uh, very dependent upon the river uh, for their livelihoods, for their culture. Um, and, you know, the Yurok tribe, we've, we've got uh, federally recognized fishing rights for uh, salmon and steelhead and other trust species. And so, you know, the, the, the rivers, and everything that the tribe does is its approach to life and you know and, and restoring the river respecting the river and and now that our lands have expanded what we really want to do is continue that 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 stewardship role uh, both for the river for for our land so and we're, we're still uh, you know, seeing really that. a huge a huge thing oh really hey, Tim, we're still okay. seeing your map not the presentation I see. Hold on. Let me switch over. Let me see here. Okay. I think if you I see. share right. and then reshare with the new one, it'll work. Yeah. Okay. Is that working? No, we still see the map. Okay. How that how about now? Still see the map. Huh, okay. If you can share screen and reshare. You can then select what you want us to see. Okay. I see. All right. Okay. How's that? Getting there, maybe? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> is that a, is that a yes yes we can see it yes. now well done okay sorry about that okay uh, so I'll, I'll try to move along here um let me see here let me go over to the slide from the beginning okay so um i wanted to talk about our really our land management approach and we, what we've decided to do is we've got a really complex um, you know, land ownership both on and off the reservation but we felt from the land management approach we wanted to simplify it and really have a what we're calling a, a Yurok community forest and a Blue Creek forest and salmon sanctuary and so we've developed a, a pretty comprehensive land management plan. And uh, I've started to talk about the Yurok tribe's culture. I just wanted to give you some background about how important really, you know, that land stewardship role is to the tribe. Um, and you know, when the tribe acquired Blue Creek, it was really a huge, uh, a huge achievement for the tribe. Uh, Blue Creek is a, a, a very culturally important place. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a it's a it's a place that's been uh, you know really held sacred to the Yurok tribe and Yurok people for a long time. Um, ecologically, it's a really has really diverse uh, fish and wildlife uh, populations. Uh, the upper watershed is part of the wilderness area. Uh, there's late successional reserve forest on Six Rivers National Forest. And even though the, the lower watershed has been logged pretty extensively, has a lot of road networks and was commercial, it's relatively uh, pristine. And so Blue Creek is just a really important place for a lot of reasons. And, uh, you know, so acquiring those lands back was just a huge accomplishment for the tribe. Um, 
this is a picture of the mouth of the Klamath River. And again, the, the river itself is just so important to the Yurok people. Uh, this is a, a picture down in Requa. Uh, this is kind of the center of the tribe's uh, fishery. In some years we have a, well, the Yurok tribe, as I mentioned, has federally um, recognized fishing rights. So we can uh, use gill nets and other traditional uh, fishing techniques on the, on the river to fish. Uh, and this is, uh, in some years, and it hasn't been the case in, in recent years, but in some years we have a, a, you know, a commercial fishery. Um, you know, the tribe has rights to fish for commercial purposes, ceremonial needs, and subsistence needs. Um, you know, fishing is a really huge part of the tribe's, um, you know, lifestyle and culture. Um, people do it, um, you know, they pass it on. And it's a really family affair, you know. Uh, they do it as a, just a way of life. Um, but I wanted to talk again about our, let me minimize this here, uh, talk a little bit about our, our land management strategy. So we've got two, a two-pronged approach. Uh, we've got our community forest lands. So roughly around 22,000 acres we've identified as, as um, areas of, of lands where we want to practice sustainable forestry. We want to uh, you know, do uh, good land management. Uh, we want to restore uh, fish and wildlife populations. But we also want to provide economic opportunities for the tribe. Um, we want to be able to, you know, as I mentioned, practice sustainable forestry. Um, and um, uneven aged forest management. We want to um, uh, meet all of our endangered species recovery goals. Um, but like I said, we want to be able to put tribal members to work, but also provide access to those lands for cultural purposes. So tribal members can uh, do their traditional gathering, uh, you know, gather basket materials, they can hunt, they can fish. Um, and access those lands that were once off limits under you know private ownership. So then we also have what we're calling uh, our Blue Creek Forest um, and Salmon Sanctuary. So Lower Blue Creek, as I mentioned, is a very important place. And uh, so we've designated around 15,000 acres of lands that we're, uh, we're not managing for any sort of commercial purposes. Uh, but we want to, the primary goal there is to restore those lands to uh, an accelerated transition towards an old growth forest ecosystem. Um, so Lower Blue Creek is, has a, is kind of a coastal redwood uh, forest. And um, so it's been commercially managed for many years. And so there's a lot of, um, you know, very dense uh, stands of, of redwoods and, and other mixed conifers. We want to go in there and do a lot of uh, active management um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, but we're essentially managing those lands to restore it to an old growth forest ecosystem um, and restore it for, for fish and wildlife habitat. Here's a picture of the, the mouth of, of uh, Blue Creek. It's a really beautiful place. Um, this is a picture here. You can see the Klamath River here and Blue Creek flows into it. This is a, a really special place, it's called Blue Hole. And uh, so Blue Creek is, a, like I mentioned, a really important place for, for salmon. Um, the creek itself su supports a, a unique, a genetically unique population of late fall run Chinook salmon. Um, they're very huge, some of those fish are really huge, they're really big fish. Um, so the creek itself supports a lot of fish, but it's also a really important thermal refugia area. So where the, where the creek flows into the, the Klamath, it provides a cold water uh, refuge for, for fish that are migrating uh, you know, up, up river. Um, and it, in some years when the Klamath River is really, when conditions are really poor and it's really hot, uh, this is a very important place. It really provides a, a, a refuge for fish. Um, so, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the objectives of the sanctuary. So, as I mentioned, we want to restore it into a late successional uh, old growth forest ecosystem. We want to restore complexity and diversity. 
Uh, right now, you know, the, a lot of those stands they've been managed for commercial, uh, you know, timber harvest. So there's a lot of uh, even age stands. So we want to do a lot of, you know, thinning work, pre-commercial thinning work, fuels reductions, uh, some, do some forest health projects. And really the idea again is to restore, you know, the connectivity between uh, the upper um, areas that are wilderness areas and the upper um, watershed to restore that with some of the, um, well, essentially to restore those con connections to the, to the Redwood National Park to the south. Um, we want to, we're working very closely with a lot of partners. We're working with the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the State Fish and, Fish and, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, the Yurok tribe, we've been working on uh, some plans to restore um, habitat for Humboldt Martin. They've been recently uh, listed as, as threatened. Um, and so we're working on, on several uh, management plans for endangered, threatened and endangered species. And so we're working really closely to, with partners, as many partners as we can, to uh, you know, identify Tim. critical habitats and fish and hey, habitat Tim. projects. Our meeting yes. uh, officially ends at 8 o'clock, which is now. So um, can you okay. try to wrap I'm it wrap up, it up. Shortly? OK, thanks. Sure. Um, so well, thank you. Um, yeah, I just threw out some pretty pictures here. This is, I mentioned, Blue Hole. It's a really important thermal refuge area. And uh, it's a really critical area for uh, migrating fish. Um, so I, I got a little bit more here. Some of the restoration work we're on, on Blue Creek, we're going to continue to do uh, watershed restoration work. So we're going to do a, a roads decommissioning program. Uh, we're doing all sorts of tree planting. And again, working towards restoring habitat for fish and wildlife. And another one last thing I want to mention is our work on uh, cultural fire. Um, you know, fire is a huge problem um, up here, as we all know. Um, arson is actually a really big problem up here. So we're really engaging the community and trying to identify fuels reduction projects and working with the community to do cultural burning. So, um, and that's a real, uh, you know, it's a real new effort, but we want to, I think it's really important to engage the community in that. So I guess with that, um, let me see here. I'll stop sharing my screen. And I don't know, any last minute questions here? I'm sorry I took so long. So Tim, I've got a question for you. Um, for the forest carbon project, basically that's allowing people and organizations to buy carbon credits for offsets, right? Yeah. Correct. Right. Okay. And so is, is there, if, if I as an individual or uh, an organization wanted to buy local carbon credits from the Yurok tribe, is there a way to do that? Um, currently there isn't. And what is, and that's a great question. Thank you. Um, you know, there's, <laughs> Cap and trade is very complex, but one of the things there's essentially two types. There's compliance offsets that you know compliant regulated entities are you know have to buy, so to speak. And then there's voluntary offsets. So green companies or individuals can purchase. Uh, let's say that they wanted to mitigate their carbon footprint on their business or or even schools. Um, so um, and those are typically um, um, you know, smaller scale, um, less expensive. And we're working towards developing a, uh, we have had some voluntary sales, a few that we've sponsored uh, a couple events. And so we're working to, to do that, I guess is the, the answer. Um, you know, I think uh, we've really right now, it's a market driven issue. And this is, I don't want to waste too much of your time, but really the pandemic's had a huge impact on the carbon markets right now um, because of the decreased energy demand and, and the effects on energy markets. It's actually um, impacted carbon as well. So, um, 
to answer your question is yes, we're working on it, and hopefully within the next year we'll be able to set something up where we can work with individuals or small businesses to do that. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Tim. I wish we could have given you more time. Um, it's, there's a lot to talk about. Um, and, but we appreciate you coming and sharing what, what the tribe is doing um, and to protect, your, to protect your land and also to, to get back some of your, your land that has, has, has been taken. So we appreciate hearing about that. And um, we are making a donation in appreciation to uh, Tri-County Independent Living who support people in our community um, to be, who have disabilities to be independent. We want to thank you for that and, and your time again. Um, and uh, oh, absolutely, thank you. Thank you. Yes, and thank thank you all. Thank you all for the work that you do for our community. It's really you know it's a it's a great thing. You guys are doing some good work. So thank you. Thank it's been you. Been a pleasure. Again.